704. Uh, like I said, episode 8 was going to be a very special one. Uh, as I'm now in Charlotte, back in college. So, everything's a little bit different. No will. Probably no uh, unofficial sponsor for the water. Stay hydrated, though. Um, well, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see about that. But, uh, yeah, couch now. No desk. Yeah. Though this is better than my living arrangements last year, so I can't really complain. Uh, big week, big, 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 big week in sports last week. Uh, and yeah, since I have no will really to help me with transitions, I'm gonna just kick it straight over to the UFC. Uh, as that was my most highly anticipated event going on. This past week, uh, UFC 253 happened, um, and uh, before I get to the main events, we'll start off with uh, Brandon Royval, uh, looked very good in the, it was the third to last match, I don't know what I exactly would call that, but that was probably my most, uh, the non-main co-main event or non-main event match that caught my attention the most. Royval looked very good against uh, Kai Car France, uh, got him with the sub, did an excellent job. And yeah, he looks like, I mean, he looks like he might be able to contender. I think he's the number eight ranked uh, in the rankings right now. I can easily see him moving up after this. Uh, and yeah, and moving, he's in the lower divisions, which aren't, you know, the deepest divisions compared to some of the, like, middleweight and welterweight and so on and so forth. Uh, so I can definitely see him making some noise there. Uh, in the cup main event, though, this, this, this build up to uh, the big ones. Though this was a big win. Uh, for the first time in a, almost a decade, uh, uh, finally a different light heavyweight champion besides either Daniel Cormier or John Jones. Uh, Jan Blackowitz brutalizes Dominic Reyes. Uh, I'll probably pop a picture up. I don't know which side, um, one of the sides of uh, Reyes' ribs, also broke his nose. Uh, Jan looked really good. I wasn't sure. He was 37 years old. One not sure if he was going to be able to hang, uh, but he proved me wrong. Um, definitely proved, my, proved me wrong. Uh, his striking is probably some of the best in that division right now. Um, it'll be very, very interesting to see where he goes um, with his title reign and uh, how some of those matchups go. Um, I think Dom, Dom's only 30. Uh, he'll be back. Um, I know he's very frustrated with how that result went, but it is what it is. Of course, in the big one, the main events, my highly, highly anticipated, highly anticipated main events of UFC 253 that I've been looking forward to since they announced it. Actually, before they announced it, uh, we had Israel, the last style vendor, style on Paulo D. Eraser Costa. Um, a lot of people were buying into the Costa hype. I wasn't one of them. I thought he was very good. I thought he was very good since we were calling him Borinchia. Borchina, excuse me. Um, knew he was going to eventually get to this level. However, there still are levels to this. Um, Izzy striking is possibly the best in the UFC. I feel like I can say that with my chest. There's no real big. I mean, there's a debate that could be that could be had about that, but I think very definitively after seeing what he did to Costa and how he just picked him apart, and then he hit him with a similar combo to what he did to Robert Whitaker to take the championship. Uh, I think that should also erase any doubt about Izzy being a boring fighter. I think that was stupid anyway. Um, we had no surprise, Stylebender wins. Uh, held it down for Nigeria, held it down for New Zealand. Um, I don't really know who's gonna take the belt off him in that division. Um, he's, he's faced nothing but killers so far. He's faced nothing but the best. I know he wants Jared Canyon there. Uh, I would be interested in that matchup. Um, seeing somebody new kind of challenge for the title besides the Whitaker, even though I'm pretty sure Rob is the number one contender now, um, or at least on the UFC rankings, though, you can debate how you feel about the validity. Uh, but yeah. Congrats to Stylebender, did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Um, feel good about that prediction. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Moving on, moving on, moving on, we will head to the college football. Uh, 
once again, for those that don't know, I go to UNC Charlotte. We once again had our game canceled. Uh, we were supposed to play Georgia State, but the day after the game got canceled, we found out Georgia State, it was originally canceled because of Corona, of course. Uh, some Georgia State players had allegedly got it. Um, found out the next day, none of them had it. It was a misread. They could have played the game. So feel for those guys, feel for the guys on the team. Uh, they're ready to play. Um, but yeah, tough two weeks in a row. Uh, COVID's gotten away. However, on the national stage, we had uh, the SEC returned, and it was interesting, to say the least. Georgia struggled against Arkansas. Uh, the game was seven to five at halftime. Um, Dewan Mathis, great story, but I do not know if he's the quarterback for them. A lot of Georgia fans pushing for JT Daniels uh, to be uh, cleared by the NCAA. Um, a lot of a lot of memes I saw for Kirby Smart there. That was a rough, rough, rough first half for them. Uh, Stinson Bennett came through, uh, former walk-on. He put on Arkansas, tougher with Keen Boyd and Co. Uh, they were kept it competitive, but in the end, Georgia was able to push through. Uh, however, that wasn't the case in all of the uh, um, SEC matchups. LSU, oh my goodness. I don't know, first off, I wanted to start off. Even though Jacoby Stevens who received the number seven, which of course for LSU was given to the top playmaker, he's a very good player. I do not know why it did not go to Derek Stanley Jr. I think he is clearly the biggest playmaker, the best possibly the best player on that team. Especially since the guy who's supposed to win the seven, Jamar Chase, has declared for the draft and is not coming back, unlike many other players that have declared and have come back. Um, don't know why it wasn't given to Stingley. I think this game was pretty much proof of why it should have been given to Stingley as Stingley got sick, couldn't play, um, not COVID related. Uh, and Mike Leach debuted at the area with Mississippi State and oh my goodness, 44 to 34. Uh, it was a slaughter. Um, the score makes that look closer for at least the ports that I was watching. Makes it feel closer than it was. Um, KJ Costello, I'm so glad as a USC fan, fight Olin, that I do not have to deal with KJ Costello at Stanford. Uh, and it appears he might reach his full potential with uh, Mike Leach, uh, 623 yards. Uh, LSU is supposed to be DBU, allegedly. I'll get to another school that alleges that they are DBU and how they did this weekend um, also. But uh, LSU claims they're DBU, I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, Costello, 623. Uh, Mississippi State rolls. I think they had like three or four receivers with over 100 yards. Uh, dominant performance. Mississippi State put uh, now the ranked. Also, AP Pool came out. They're ranked too. Uh, they put the SEC on notice. Mike Leach is here. Uh, of course, the other DBU, or claim it to DBU, has an even weaker possibly than LSU. And that's Florida State. They played Miami, uh, Florida State, welcome to the dweller. Uh, they're terrible. Um, they've been terrible for the past couple of years. Um, this trend seems to happen uh, when great coaches leave, in, in this case Jimbo Fisher, left Florida State, suddenly these programs do not look up. It is very rare that you see a great coach leave a program and that program instantly bounces back. This Florida State team is terrible. With all due respect to James Blackman, he's trash. Part of that's on him. Part of that's not on him. Part of it's because the Florida State offensive line is also trash. This is a Miami team playing without their top player and one of the best defensive players in the nation, Gregory Rasua, who declared for the draft. Um, and they still dominate. Uh, the Eric King looks like the answer. Manny Diaz is doing a great job over there in Miami. Kind of helped me building that culture. Um, them not so much buying into the Miami's back. I'm not going to do that whole thing and say Miami's back, though they've been impressive two straight weeks. Um, but things are looking up. However, for Mike Norville and Florida State, they need something fast. Because uh, this, this could get ugly. They could be in the one of the worst teams in the ACC. 
based off of how they look against Miami, they may be one of the worst, if not the worst team in the ACC. Uh, another upset we had was uh, K-State took out Oklahoma 38-35. Um, Spencer Rattler, for all of the Heisman hype and hype he got after the first week, and even in really the first quarter of this game, uh, they can to calm down. I think he's going to be fine, and he's a great quarterback. But uh, K-State, for the second straight year, seems like uh, they have Lincoln Riley's number. And, um, they have Oklahoma's number, 38-35. Um, uh, Rather, do that terrible pass at the end. Picked off, big one for Kansas State. Um, losses mean a lot more this year. And uh, that's going to be very tough for Oklahoma to come back for if they want to make it to the playoff and contend. They still have defensive problems. Still need to figure something out there. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the more entertaining games this week, uh, Florida and Ole Miss. Kyle Trask had six touchdowns. Looked very, 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 very good. Lane Kiffin's Ole Miss didn't look bad. Um, nice to see Matt Corral at quarterback. Um, see how they were going to function. Be a Trask, Kyle Pitts, the Kyle to Kyle connection. Looked very deadly. Uh, Florida handled business. Another shootout, uh, we had Texas, and Texas Tech in true Big 12 fashion, uh, I believe outscored both of the basketball games. The last two basketball games last year that Texas and Texas Tech played against each other, I think were lower scoring than this football game. 63 to 56, Sam Ellinger did it again, Bowman threw down, the horns down, and then Texas Tech fumbled the lead in three minutes, and then proceeded to lose in overtime. Uh, Ellinger, I think, had a six touchdown, five touchdown game. I feel like he's had quite a few of those um, during his tenure as Texas quarterback. Uh, but yeah, um, tough one for Texas Tech fans. Uh, stressful one for Texas fans. Uh, we'll see how they do. We'll see if that just means Texas Tech is better. As I tweeted out, actually, TJ Vasher's draft stock has to be way up. But it also feels like he's been at Texas Tech for like a decade. I feel like Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield were throwing to TJ Basher. That's how long I feel like he's been here. But nonetheless, Texas gets it done. And then the last thing I got for college football, uh, UCF demolishes ECU. A lot of people wondering who's the best team in Florida. I would say it is UF. I think it's Florida. Florida Gators right now the best team. However, UCF, ever since that undefeated season, have just been on the up and up and really kind of putting themselves similar to uh, how Boise State was thought of as the uh, non-Power 5 team that was the group of six team, I should call them, uh, that could hang with those Power 5 guys. I think UCF is kind of really into that role. Um, and yeah, all right, and of course, uh, the pressing one, uh, the one that you may have all been waiting for, depending on how I titled this, I've called it the main event of the sports world the past couple weeks because it really is, and uh, it's the NBA. Lakers up 4-1, Braun with, well, excuse me, Lakers not up 4-1, excuse me, my inside are wrong. Lakers win in five games, Braun with 38-16-10, still the best player on the planet, uh, argue with your mother. Um, I know a lot of people after the 80-game winner, which was fantastic. We're saying, oh, Brown's not even the best player on this team. That was ridiculous. This is stupid. I explained that last episode. If you want to go watch that, explain what I think about the relationship with Anthony Davis and LeBron James and how they coexist and how that works so efficiently. Um, but yeah, Brown did what he does. Uh, Lakers move on. And of course, last night we had Miami versus Boston, game six. And. Uh, wasn't time for Boston. Uh, Miami, I think, was the better team anyway. They get the win. They advance at six. So now we have Miami. We have the Los Angeles Lakers. These storylines write themselves. Even though we could have had the Lakers in Boston, Marvel, whatever. Anyways, for me, Miami and LA is a much more compelling matchup. And really a much better matchup. Because it's going to be very interesting to see how the Lakers play against Miami, how Miami plays against the Lakers uh, because of the personnel in each team. Um, 
I actually think mine is probably deeper. Um, as in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth best guys are probably better than the Lakers' third, fourth, fifth, sixth guys. Depending on how I guess the Lakers guys are playing. But um, with the Heat, you got Jimmy Buckets. Tyler Harrow has been playing out of his mind. I'll get to his situation. Um, Duncan Robinson's one of the best shooters on the planet. Gordon Dragic, Bam Adayo, Jay Crowder. Lakers, you got Rondo, you got Caruso. JaVel has been whatever JaVel has been. You got Cruz, who's kind of been in the slump the past couple games. Danny Green can't make a three, but when he does, the Lakers are very deadly. Um, and of course, you got Bron and AD. How they, I wonder what lineups Vogel and Spore are going to throw at each other. That's a very intriguing matchup. Um, of course, you got LeBron versus Jimmy Butler. You have AD versus Bam, which is a very interesting matchup. Bam may. I'm not going to say that. Um, I was going to say something that I don't know if I believe yet. I guess we'll find out after game one if Bam can defend AD. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to say uh, but athletically, Ben is probably the best matchup AD's had so far, I think. From a purely athletic standpoint, I think that's the best defensive matchup he's had. We'll see if AD feasts like he has pretty much all playoffs. Um, we'll see if Braun feasts like he has all playoffs. Uh, of course, we've got the, pattern, the battle for Kali Elise Henry, uh, Kyle Kuzma, her ex, versus Tyler Harrow, her current man. She is actually in the bubble. So if we see some Deion Waiters versus Tim Hardaway at the Rising Stars Challenge type theatrics there, uh, I think that would be very entertaining for us, the viewers. Um, I would take care of in that matchup the way both of them are playing right now. Uh, who do I think is going to win? If I had to pick, you were holding the gun to my head, and I, you said, Chris, you have to pick. I'm going to pick the Los Angeles Lakers to win the championship. But I think this is easily going to be their toughest series yet. I think it's going to be a six to seven game series. I think we might have a classic series in our hands just because of how Miami matchups against Los Angeles and the issues they could provide for them defensively and offensively. Um, I think it'll make for a very intriguing finals matchup. I think this is one of the best finals matchups we could have gotten. So, very interesting. I'll take the Lakers if I have to pick. But really, just as a neutral, um, very excited to see how that goes. Uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. I'll hop to music and film before I get to the NFL. Uh, the boys, I think episode six, this past one was, again, like I said, the past however many so weeks. If you're not watching the boys, you should be. Probably the best show on television right now, in my opinion. Uh, really, very, very good episode. Um, I'll leave it at that. Of course, the big news was the music. Uh, Rest and Turtle Trap, the Trap Soul Deluxe, had some stuff that, of course, wasn't on the original album that fans have been clamoring for. The Rainbow Remix beat The Weeknd. Uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, great stuff. So, if you want some nostalgia, you want to hear what the Bryson Tiller Trap Soul hype is about? Go back and listen to that. It's a great album. Probably his classic if he has one. Uh, the big music news, however, was the Tory Lanez mega situation. Tory Lanez ended his silence uh, by dropping an album. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, definitely mixed feelings about uh, how Tory chose to do that um, and go about. Explaining himself, I get it though. He's an artist, so he's kind of, you know, doing what artists do and create arts. And uh, that's how he felt most comfortable doing it. And you know, kind of is what it is. Um, from a musical standpoint, I think it's some of his best work. Uh, one of his best albums off of a purely musical standpoint. Of course, uh, doesn't really matter if, he find, if he's found guilty uh, or if he's lying. Um, if he's not lying, this is probably a very legendary moment in hip-hop, if not music. Um, just because that'll raise the quality of the album and the meaning of it so
so much more. Uh, I'm still more inclined to believe Meg at the current moment, uh, just based off of the evidence and what we do know. We don't know everything. Only the people that were involved know what happened. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, classic saying, mine it is what it is. That's just kind of what the situation is. Uh, the fourth song on the album, I think, uh, the song like, I think I, see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, in which he just, everybody, he just JoJo, Cash Page, I caught strays, Kalani caught strays, J.R. Smith caught strays. Uh, just, Everybody was getting straight. Let's see if I can find the name for it. Uh, yeah, sorry, but I had to. Uh, went crazy. Um, sounds like Tori and Meg, uh, based on what he said in the album, also were in a relationship. Don't know how he pulled that off, but credit to him. Uh, if he's not lying, of course. Uh, but, um, you know. It's a good album, but you know, context matters in the situation, and uh, I'm kind of trying to hold my judgment until we find out more context wise uh, about what actually happened. Uh, I'm gonna kick it over to the NFL now. Uh, quick transition here from music and film to the NFL. Uh, Cowboys and the Seahawks, Cowboys fans, we're one and two. It's not looking good for us. Uh, Dak is playing like he wants that contract. However, even though he had two big sets there, uh, can't really put this loss on him. Our defense is just, it's, it's not good. And I'm going to call my shot right now. Russell Wilson will win MVP this year. I'm telling y'all, uh, he's playing on a different level. It's time. It's time, yeah, it's time Russ gets his due. DK Metcalf is looking like he's becoming the number one receiver in the league. Uh, he's been phenomenal. Really living up to that promise he has. Whole offense has been good, including Chris Carson. Uh, Tyler Lockett, of course. Olsen's got involved. Uh, Russ really got them going. 14 touchdowns, record in three games. NFL record, 14 touchdowns in three games. Uh, that's video game. That stuff you don't matter. Bears beat the Falcons. Uh, Tariq Cohen, unfortunately, towards ACL. Happy that my guy got paid, though. Um, but hate it for him. Hate it that he towards ACL. Falcons, another blown lead. Dan Quinn has got to go. He's got to go. No questions asked. Got to get him out of here. Uh, we got the Rams and the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen continues to prove me wrong. I was one of his doubters as I covered him in episode 7. However, uh, Ram, I mean, the Bills also did a really good job with the front office putting a great defense, putting uh, weapons around him, digs, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, he's been great. He's looked great this year. Uh, looks like he could be the franchise quarterback for the Bills, and that would be huge for them. Jalen Ramsey continues the FSU football, and everybody included right now, taking L's left and right. Browns are over 500 for the first time since 2014. Uh, they beat Washington 34 to 20. Haskins. Uh, I had a higher grade. Uh, I didn't think Haskins would. I mean, maybe it's just taking time, but I thought he'd be a little bit more pro ready than he's shown to be right now. Um, and it's another game where he struggled. Could be a young quarterback working through some stuff, or could he just not? He's just not the guy. I think we'll find out this season. Um, got a lot of season left to play. Whether Haskins is that guy for Washington, or he's going to be a guy that's a, lot, a long term backup, or just kind of like a middling starter, or whether he's going to be that franchise quarterback. Not looking good right now. Uh, Titans and the Vikings. Vikings are in contention for Trevor Lawrence. Um, and at this point, I feel like Vikings fans would get very excited about that. Uh, that was a very close game, only one by one, but uh, Titans looking good, looking like they might be able to make the playoffs again. Uh, Patriots, Cam Newton, comeback player of the year. I said that last week. I'll say that the whole week. Well, the whole week. I'll say that the whole year, excuse me. 
Cam's going into him and come back player of the year. Patriots got a great fit there. Uh, him and Ben Bel Belichick are like this, it seems. So, good one for them. Uh, 49ers escape that life stadium. The Giants are terrible. Similar to my fantasy team, which is 0-3, because I drafted Saquon. And was pretty much relying running backs points-wise on Saquon. Similar to how the New York Giants are relying offensively on Saquon Barkley, who's no longer there. Daniel Jones continues to struggle. It looked like he shouldn't have been a top 10 pick. I didn't think he should have been a top 10 pick anyway, but it's the NFL anything can happen. Cincinnati Bengals and the Philadelphia Eagles provide us our first tie. 23-23. Um, Carson Wentz has not been the same quarterback since he got hurt during that MVP caliber season. Uh, he's, he's just, and he's definitely not looking like the same quarterback this year. Also, Jason Peters, uh, no, he got hurt yesterday, but he is washed. Oh my goodness, is he washed. Uh, feels like that whole Eagles offensive line is washed, actually. Uh, on the other hand, Joe Burrow, franchise quarterback for you, Bengals, great job. Put some weapons around him. Uh, give that man an offensive line also. Good gracious. Uh, he took a mean shot uh, in his game. But yeah, first tie. Um, two teams training, I think, in separate directions. Uh, long term right now. Texans and the Steelers. Steelers get the win 28-21. Juju scored. Uh, bids look good. Look very good. Um, Texans have just had a, I wonder how the Texans are going to do once they get out of this just murderous row of a schedule. Because um, I think they're better than they're playing right now. It's just, this is a tough, tough way. The past couple teams they've played and now with the Steelers. It's just a tough way to start the season, especially when you have no training camp, you've had no preseason. Um, just a tough way to start the season. The Jets are the worst team in the league. Colts 36-7. Uh, good one for the Colts. Good to get them some momentum. The Jets are awful. I think Donaldson may be the guy, but they have nothing on that team. Nothing or anything on that team. Panthers upset the Chargers. Herbert's first start. He didn't look bad. Um, honestly, it's a solid debut. But just a, I mean, an impressive upset. For the Panthers, no CMC. We all know he's that team. But they found a way to win. They got to do that for a while. As uh, McCaffrey's out for, I think, like a month and a half or two months with a sprained ankle. Um, you know that's an injury that can definitely linger. So, interesting, interesting situation ahead for them. Uh, Buccaneers take the Broncos. I said last week, Bucks are going to be one of those teams that take a little minute to gel. But when they gel, they're going to be very good. Broncos went through a couple different quarterbacks, I think, in this game. Uh, Judy being out, I think, affected them. Cortland Sutton being out affected them. Um, and, yeah, uh, Drew Locke being out affected them. Broncos didn't win a lot of injuries. Uh, but, yeah, the Bucks were just a better team. I think even if they had those guys back, I was still taking the Bucks for this game. Uh, Lions and the Cardinals, we saw the best of Kyler Murray with that run move he put on the Cuda. But we also saw the worst of Murray when Okuda picked them off after he telegraphed a pass. Uh, again, I still think Kyle's going to be a superstar, but uh, every young quarterback has it. To have your off games. He just didn't have a good one today. Well, yesterday. Um, I think he'll be fine long term. And the last game we had the Packers and Saints. Michael Thomas never, ever doubt his worth again. I think we're seeing how much it's affecting the Saints team. There's a steep drop off wide receiver quality wise from Ken Guard White to Sherlock Smith or whoever. Uh, Alvin Kamara is really the number one receiver on that team, alongside being the number one running back on that team. Uh, Drew played solid, but Aaron Rodgers has been Aaron Rodgers. Uh, this, that's probably the best way for me to put it. He's playing like the Aaron Rodgers we all know and some of us love. Really helping elevate the wide receiver talent with Devontae being hobbled. Um, really a situation where they probably should be struggling right now, but they're flourishing. So 
big ups to Rogers, another guy that could be in the MVP conversation, depending on how the season goes. But uh, great start to the season for him and a great start to the season for the Packers. Uh, now, um, I believe I'm going to check and do my notes here. Uh, got everything else covered, so I'm going to kick it to the roundup. See, you see, I have the, I have the Stanley Cup Finals. Much of the roundup I got here is the MLB and my predictions there. So really, this could just be the MLB category plus the Stanley Cup Finals. But anyways, Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I think we got Game 6 actually tonight. So uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning could wrap it up. Um, we will see. Uh, Braden Point has been great in this series. Uh, Last two games went to overtime, so uh, great for us, the viewers. Um, very exciting. We'll see if we can get a third straight here in game six. We'll see if Tampa Bay can close out. Or can Dallas pull it out of the bag, you know, pull out some tricks here uh, and push this to a game seven and decisive of game seven. What's better than sports in the game seven? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I think I picked Dallas. So... My hockey predictions continue to be about 50-50. I'm shooting about 60% from the field like I'm a center in the NBA. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if Dallas can rally. But I think Tampa Bay is actually going to close out tonight. I think they get that done. Stamkos came back. Uh, don't know if he's playing tonight. Uh, came back, I think, in game two or game three. Scored a goal. That's been very big for Tampa Bay. I mean, getting your captain back out there to provide that leadership, to provide that experience. And then when he's as good as Steven Stamkos is, that just kind of pushes it to another level. And uh, Tampa Bay's been on another level than Dallas in this series so far. So we'll see if they close out. I think they will. Um, of course, you know, the playoffs are next. Uh, regular season wrapped up uh, yesterday. The Rays, the Tampa Bay Rays, to some surprise, finished with the best record in the AL. However, to nobody's surprise, the Los Angeles Dodgers finished with the best in the National League. Um, so we got the wild card round coming up. Um, some quick predictions here. I got New York. We, so we got New York versus Cleveland. I'm a Yankees fan. However. I don't know how much faith I have in us right now because of how inconsistent we've been. Cleveland's got Shane Bieber. We know what he can do. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to pick us. I, I think it's going to go three games. I think it's going to go the full three games. I think we will be able to pull through. Please, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I got the Yankees over Cleveland. Uh, we've got everybody's least favorite team versus the Minnesota Twins, uh, Astros versus the Twins. Um, Astros finished with a losing record for the first time in a while. Uh, I don't know if that's, I forget what the statistic was about the World Series winner coming back, or making World Series and then coming back the next year with a losing record, but Houston, Minnesota, I think Houston wins. Uh, I think they'll show up here in the playoffs. Um, hasn't been their greatest year, but... Uh, I think we might see a different team here in the playoffs. Uh, or we'll see the Cheaters get exposed again and the Twins will push through. I know that's what pretty much every baseball fan is rooting for. If I had a root for a team, I'd probably root for the Twins in this matchup. But uh, from a pure prediction wise, I think the Astros get it done. Uh, Chicago versus Oakland, I got the White Sox. Um, very interested to see what all that young talent for the White Sox is able to do in the playoffs. I think it could add some excitement, similar to how uh, the Nationals had when they run to the uh, World Series. Not saying the White Sox are going to the World Series, but similar seeing that youth kind of take over um, as Juan Soto and the Rebels did for Washington and help them push them to further heights. Uh, Tampa Bay versus Toronto. Obviously, I got Tampa Bay. Um, though, though, Toronto could pull the upset, but I think Tampa Bay is pitching. It's just going to be too much for Toronto. Um, and they're young talent. Another great team with a lot of great young players. Um, however, I got Tampa Bay moving on. The Miami Marlins made it out of nowhere. Uh, they're facing the Chicago Cubs. I, I 
don't know exactly who to pick here. Um, if I had to pick, I'm going to say the Cubs. But Miami's been so unpredictable this year. Um, one of the teams you would expect to have been one of the worst teams, and here they are in the playoffs, here they are in the wild card round. In the matchup, they possibly could win. Uh, anything can happen. Uh, I'm going to pick the Cubs, but we'll see. San Diego versus St. Louis. I got San Diego. Uh, Tetsis Jr. is back out of his slump. He's an MVP candidate. And uh, I think happy times are coming for Padres fans sooner than later. Uh, I got them taking out the Cardinals. We got Cincinnati versus Atlanta. I got the Braves taking out the Reds. Um, Acuna, Albies, great pitching. I got the Braves. Uh, and of course, Milwaukee versus the Dodgers. I and everybody else in the United States of America besides the state of Wisconsin, and even some people probably in the state of Wisconsin, are picking the Los Angeles Dodgers to win. Uh, maybe they can get the ring this year. Maybe Kershaw can get his ring. History says they'll choke, but we'll see. We'll see. It's 2020. Anything can happen. Even the Dodgers winning the World Series. Um, with that said, with that said, with that said, that is all I have for my notes. I did not take a single sip of water. I'm proud of myself. Um, however, stay hydrated. In fact, I will take one right now. I got an English show. But, uh, yeah. Uh, very, very simple. Probably a shorter episode of the Infantine Exchange. Uh, very efficient. Just kind of adjusting to the new surroundings. It's my second day back here in Charlotte. So, we'll kind of see what the format becomes. Uh, it shows ever changing, uh, ever evolving. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so, just kind of adapting to two surroundings. So, probably going to be a very interesting episode nine and what happens there. But, without further ado, stay safe, drink water, or just sign off.